Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Ceph encryption. And when it comes to encryption in Ceph, there is a bunch of different ways of doing it. You could either de decrypt on the client and then send the data over, then the Ceph is not doing anything. You can do it in the middle layer when you have the specific services that use a Ceph. And those could encrypt things, and then Ceph is not really involved either. But you can also do data in REST encryption, which is when you're actually saving it to disk, you want it to be encrypted on the disk. If somebody steals that disk or even that computer, you still want it to be safe. So that is what we're going to look into today. And what you see here is my cluster. It's very simple it's just a one host cluster nothing more and if you are using encryption you should have multiple of them um, multiple hosts because you want to have your monitors on a different machine than your data and we come to that so this is my cluster if i go here over to my uh, computer here uh, this host i can run this command we have seen it before prepare an LVM volume with data on this specific device. What I add to this now is dash dash DM crypt. That is the only thing I need to do. And then I supply the password and it will prepare a volume for me. So this OSD is encrypted with a LUX format and it's gonna use LUX1 because LUX2 has a bunch of other specific features but it's also not supported on all platforms and Ceph is more into actually working on multiple platforms than having a newer version of Lux. So that's why they have chosen to use the older version. Then I can activate this one. This is very similar to how we usually do it. Just activate zero uh, of them and then the specific ID of it and it will start to that service. If we go over here we will see that we have an OSD, it's currently down, now it's up and in a little while here it will give me the result that I have 10 gigabytes that I can actually write to. So now we have added one of these encrypted ones. What is actually going on here? What, what have we added? So if we go I become user uh, root here so I can actually look and if we go into var lib ceph and then osd and then this osd directory and if we look what's in this directory we have an activate mon map that's not something that will be there later on we have a bmf uh, description here with a bunch of different things those are not things that are going to stay there either What's interesting here is that we have the block, we have the blue FS, and we have the specific FS ID. So the block, the FS ID will be kept. The key ring, of course, will be kept so it can talk with the background uh, services. Uh, we will also keep this COVID backend. We will keep this OSD key and red D and so on. Some of these files will be kept even if we close and start editing it. And why do I say that some of them will be kept? That is because this specific file here, the lockbox key ring, so if we look at that, that is a specific key that is used with my cluster. If I stop this and restart the service so this OSD is not activated yet, it will have one of these lockbox uh, key rings here and nothing else. So this directory will be cleaned out and the only thing that will be here is this lockbox ID. And if we look at our DF here, we see that this is a temporary OS that is mounted here. And this temporary OS is something that is in memory and when we have this lockbox key ring, it will ask my monitor where can I find the information for this specific OSD? This will in turn give me back all the information that I can put into this tempfs directory in order to access my data. 
and the data is in this block device over here and the key that will decrypt that block device is the OSD key. So this is the DMCrypt key that will be used in order to unlock my block device and read my data. So the lockbox key will be used in order to ask the monitor, can I please get the actual key that could unlock the specific OSD? And this makes it possible to have this running as usual, but if you don't have the monitor and try to mount this to a different system that doesn't have that specific monitor, that has all the keying information and all the accessibility, this will be locked data that can't be accessed if this machine is stolen. So as long as you keep your monitor safe, all your data will be safe. So let's say that you have one room where you have three monitors and then you have like uh, holes and holes of these giant machines that runs how many LSDs possible with all the data in the world. As long as they can't break in and get your monitors, then you can actually feel pretty safe with all this extra data in the other part of the center, because if they uh, take those disks, they are safe. And let's say that you have one of these disks, you pull it out in order to do some kind of maintenance and then want to um, destroy it, so you put it in a pile for destruction, the data is still safe in that off-store office on this drive because it's already encrypted. So that's another part when you are doing maintenance and so on, you pull out the encrypted disk. Of course, when you are in a larger environment, you want to destroy these disks just so you don't leak any data, but it's still safe to take it out and destroy it a bit later because it's already encrypted. It's gobbledygooks that is on those drives and the monitors are the keys that can unlock these devices. So that's some of the reasons why you want to encrypt your drives. It's currently not something that you want to do in smaller clusters or in clusters where you have full access of the data centers and so on. It will give you a little penalty, of course, when it needs to decrypt things, but it's not worse than your normal off OS encryption, which is commonly used in most, um, so most work computers when you actually have sensitive data. So it's not something that you need to worry about. So this was what I wanted to cover today, how to encrypt a drive, how the encryption actually works, what is Kept, it needs to be kept safe and how you can uh, leverage this specific functionality. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you want to run encrypted uh, drives in your Ceph cluster, why not support it or just check the checkbox if you're using the Ceph admin, so you have the feature there, or you can turn it on when you create your OSDs like I showed in this video. Are you running an encrypted cluster today? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. And I really hope to see you in the next video.